Education, data, equity. Reluctant project manager. Gamer, nurse, developer. Job interview today. Amy Heldman and I am the planning and GIS specialist at Friends of the Chicago River um, and we have been working long and hard on a mapping tool called the Natural Solutions Tool. I know Cameron read the very long title that I submitted for my presentation um, but in short I'm going to be showing you all a demo into a GIS based tool called the Natural Solutions Tool. And I have a couple slides and then I'll actually go into the demo of the tool itself. So just to give some background on the tool because I think like you all are data experts and people and designers in the room and things like that. Um, it's really fun to kind of hear about how the tool came about and what was the visioning for this um, collaborative process. So the Natural Solutions Tool comes from a group called the Greater Chicago Watershed Alliance. So Friends of the Chicago River started this coalition in 2020, right before the pandemic hit. Um, so we gathered and you can see the logos on the screen. Um, so right now it's about, there's a couple new partners I think, but there's about 20, uh, 20, 21 partners that are on this coalition. Um, so you can see like agency, um, nonprofits, and yeah, lots of other partners. And then this is a slide that I just kind of have representing. Um, so we had this vision for our greater Chicago watershed region to expand nature-based solutions. And when we had this vision, when we started our coalition, we really then decided, hmm, we need a strategy for identifying where we can do our project prioritization and really focus our efforts um, in areas of the greatest need as well as the greatest opportunity. So that's just my reiteration for this slide here. But also I do, I do want to highlight the kind of the power of collaboration and I know you all obviously support that being in this group here today and you guys having your hacking um, breakout groups but it really was a really fun and you know engaging process of we had this vision and then 18 months later we kind of had this tool so I think it just goes to say how those collaborations are very important. This next slide is a little fun transition, but it highlights the modeling objectives of the Natural Solutions Tool. So I'll flip through those. But this is this first one is just an image of the study area, which again, you'll see in the tool in a second. But so the first modeling objective we have is healthy. So this is thinking about public health, addressing environmental conditions such as heat island effects and air pollution. And then we also have equity, so thinking about areas where people suffer from environmental stressors and lack the benefits of nature. And then we have biodiversity, so retain and enhance ecological health by supporting and creating living landscapes of native species. And then protected, so this is thinking about runoff and things like water quality and community flooding. And then lastly, uh, we have connectivity. So this is thinking about um, off-street trail connectivity and greenways. Um, we don't really have too much transportation data in here. Um, we were really just focusing on um, the nature-based solution aspect of trails. This is my little fun visual here, but this is kind of showing we have one layer in the tool that's an overall stacked priority analysis. So it takes into consideration all of these different data layers that we have for the modeling objectives and combines it into one overall strategy for our region for investing in the multi-benefits of nature-based solutions. This is just to highlight the timeline of the tool. So I won't say much about the idea because I kind of already reiterated that at the beginning, but after we had the idea for the tool, we went into something called the discovery process. So that was really where we met with so many different stakeholders and kind of tried to make the boundary of the tool, you know, and it is a sub watershed based boundary. So trying to think about, can we include a couple more? Um, so that's where we decided on that conversation. And then the technical advisory team was a really amazing process of having a lot of volunteer, technical experts, community groups, nonprofit partners come together monthly over the summer of 2022 and helped us find those data sets for the tool. So we really appreciated those people who came together. And then the build process happened last winter. So the Trust for Public Land, um, definitely need to highlight their JS team was the one who built the modeling interface. So they're on our Greater Chicago Watershed Alliance. So they really did the building of the tool. 
Um, and then now we're in the integrate phase. So a lot of my job has been showing the tool to groups like you all and kind of trying to get it into the hands of every, you know, anyone who wants to use it. It's for designers, it's for community leaders, it's for planners and GIS specialists. So um, it's a free and publicly accessible tool for anybody. So. And then this slide here, um, I won't, again, spend too much time on because I kind of want to dive into the tool, but just highlighting the study area again, you can see almost all of Cook County, parts of DuPage, Will, and Lake, and then also the stats um, I would look at the bottom. It's just pretty big study area, so we have almost 1.5 million parcels, which is why we did have some conversations of we had to, you know, decide on a boundary because we couldn't include, you know, the whole area or the whole state or anything like that, so we did have to cap it at at some point. So now I will go into the tool demo. So this is the landing website for the tool. And then the first thing you'll notice, you'll see the title, Natural Solutions Tool, Greater Chicago. And then you'll see all these little icons. The mapping portal is the one you'll be in for the, the main part of the tool that you're using. But then we have other icons like um, a user guide. So for those of you who aren't JS experts or new to map making and things like that, um, it's a really accessible uh, language guide where if you get lost in the tool or you want to do something and you don't know where to click, you can use that. The data description I will open just to show you all. So the biggest question I always get is, where is that data coming from, right? And that's very important when you're using data to know where it's coming from. So we do have this very long list of all the different data layers we have in the tool. So you can look at um, you know, the data source, a little description in the name. So I always have this open when I'm using the tool so that way you can refer back to what you're looking at. So once you log into the tool, the first thing you'll see on the right side of the screen is the interactive mapping. And most of you who are mapping experts can know that, you know, you can scroll, you can zoom in with your mouse. Um, another feature of the tool is that you can change base maps. So when you're zoomed in, you probably want to have the aerial base map on if you're looking at a certain parcel. So I'll go back to topographic. And then on the left-hand side of the screen, we have the different tool functionalities that I'll go through quickly in this demo. But one other thing I will point out is this is the study boundary, like I mentioned before. So this, and then the, we have a natural area um, layer as well. So these automatically turn on when you open the map, but any layer in this tool, you can turn on and off. So you could start with a blank canvas if you want, but these two will automatically turn on. All right, so the first thing that I will show you all are these things called analysis results. So this is what I was talking about in my fancy little transition I did earlier. So I'll zoom in a little bit. But so this first layer is the overall stacked priorities layer. So that was that last one you saw on the slides. But this is taking into consideration healthy, equity, biodiverse, protected, and connected data sets. So each one of those modeling objectives has a set of data sets, but this overall one is showing all of them merged together to create a prioritization analysis. So I have it displayed here, but let me turn on the legend. So the orange that you see here is the highest, or the darkest orange is showing the very high priority areas, and then the, mid, the medium orange is high, and then the other um, slightly um, less dimmed kind of orange is the moderate priority. So these are thinking about where are areas that we can invest in for public health, equity, biodiversity, and so on, so on. So that is that layer. And I do just want to like pull out some, you know, findings that we looked at at Friends of the Chicago River when we first got the tool and we saw, oh my goodness, the Calumet area lights up, which makes a ton of sense because a lot of partners are working in the Calumet region. So you can kind of see there um, the different areas that are highlighted, the little Calumet, um, Lake Calumet, some of the marshes. And then you can also scroll and kind of see the Chicago Sanitary Ship Canal lights up. And that makes sense because a lot of us know, you know, there's a lot of industry there um, and a lot of EJ concerns as well. So I just think that's a great thing to think about when you're looking at maps, you know, what is the story that it's telling? All right, so then I will flip on some of the other analysis results. So we have the public health, and as I scroll, you can see all of those names from daytime heat island effect to physical health. Those are all the data layers that we have in the tool. And again, if you have a question where, where that's from, that's where you would go to that data description I showed earlier. So I'll turn on the overall public health. So this is just showing those priorities for thinking about um, investment in public health. Let me turn on the legend again. So you can look at it overall, or you can look at them individually as priorities. So let's look at mental health priority. 
So then you can kind of see where that is. And another question that I'll just say that people always ask is, how do you make the prioritization analysis, right? So that was the role of the technical advisory team and also the TPL um, GIS team is you can go to the data description and see like what percentage did they call a very high priority for mental health. So that's where you could go look at that. All right, so then I'll just flip through two more. So let's look at equity. I'll turn that on. So this is showing overall equity stack priorities. And as you might notice, it's very similar to public health, right? And I think the biggest thing with that is we know there's a lot of environmental justice considerations here. So it really is telling that story as well, just looking at those two together. And then one thing I'll also highlight is, so like life expectancy and rent burden, it was really cool. So in the technical advisory team, um, we had some um, community groups that came in and, then, and they said, we really need to have rent burden in there because for Chicago, that's a geographic specific equity data set that we wanna see in the tool. So that's really why I do really wanna emphasize, you know, the need for collaboration within GIS and mapping tools. So that way you can have that, the, the higher accuracy represented with that local input. And then lastly, I'll show one more. I'll show the protected stacked priority. So to zoom in a little bit for this one, but it shows you know, a lot of different waterways, but also some absorbed priorities when thinking about you know, in the loop and things. So I will switch now to the overlay layers in the tool. So this is thinking about raw data sets, supplemental data sets. So it's not as much as the prioritization analysis as the analysis layers. So I'll turn on, like we have the Chicago boundary. I'll just, I should have had that on the whole time so you can kind of see where the city is. But we have, you know, ward boundaries, we have watershed boundaries, commissioner boundaries. And then like I'll turn on a couple. So we have these things called green infrastructure considerations. So this is thinking of data sets that might be helpful for thinking about a green infrastructure project. So like I'll turn on elevation. So you can kind of see, this is an interesting, I just like this one because it's pretty as well, but you can kind of see the different depths, um, especially within the waterways. Um, so let's flip that one off. Another one that's important that you all are familiar with, I'm sure, is, you know, per percent impervious cover data sets. So really thinking about, as we know, a lot of industry on the sanitary ship canal, that highlights, and same with the loop, a lot of impervious cover. And then I'll just flip on a couple, like unhealthy, and I do really encourage everyone to peek. There's a ton of data sets, but I won't go through all of them. Another one is PM 2.5. So this is really telling, again, for thinking about um, the west side of the city, west suburbs, kind of seeing the 10 to 12 as that higher PM 2.5, thinking about air pollution. All right. And then let's also look at equity. Let's just turn on a couple. We have percent disability by census track. And this was one that also people really wanted to see in the technical advisory team of this should be in the tool. We have CMAP, they have a layer of disinvested communities, which is just a binary data set of just showing where those are. But that's another local data set that was exciting to include. All right, and then I'll show one more. We also have, thinking about CMAP data, they have this layer of impact. Yes, or flood susceptibility index. Let's turn this on. Some of the layers, and some of you mapping people might know this, they're gray until you zoom in, and then you can look at it. So let's turn on flood susceptibility index urban. Whoa, yeah, so it's bright red, and I'll turn on the legends. So that means very susceptible to flooding. So um, a lot of areas in the city will be this dark red, as well as some of the suburban communities like Riverdale. All right, yeah, apologies for turning these on and off so fast, but I just kind of want to give a highlight of some of the features. One other layer is turned on. Oh, vacant land, there we go. All right, so that is two of the functionalities, just looking at the different data sets. Um, but now I'm going to show one of the unique features of the tool is we can do these things called parcel reports. So if you have an address in mind, forgot to mention we have an address bar, so you can type in... You know, maybe we want to see, let's see, some of you might know this address I'm typing in. Okay. So, some of you might be familiar with the Bali's Casino that's going on, <laughs> um, if you live in Chicago or not. Um, so, at Friends of the Chicago River, us being, you know, us, this development being along the river, we were really interested to see where this ranked in the Natural Solutions Tool in terms of those different objectives. So. 
The cool thing is with the stool, you can type in your address. And then you might have noticed when I zoomed in earlier, those purple polygons that highlight up, those are parcel boundaries. So if it's purple, you can click on it. I'll just say that. We don't have, we excluded some parcels that are smaller than 0.07 acres. And that was just because there were those really small ones. So um, and we had to finish the tool modeling at some point. So we did have those exclusions, but a lot of parcels still in here. Um, but if it's purple, you can click on it. So you'll click on a parcel when you zoom in and it already comes up with a ton of information. It has the parcel ID, the owner, Chicago Tribune. You can see the address, the acres for that parcel. And then you can start to see um, administrative boundaries. So this is helpful, like what ward is it in? You know, where can I, who can I write to? Who can I do my advocacy with? Who's my alderman? Um, so you can be begin to pull some of that. Green infrastructure considerations. Um, and while I go through all this, I will create a parcel report um, so it might take a second, and I had them pulled up on the other one, so we'll give it a second, but in about a minute, um, you'll have this PDF parcel report, so you can use that and print it. It's, a, it's just a really nice format where you could print it, you know, put it in a grant report, you could use it for advocacy. Um, we've used some of these reports for our own advocacy for thinking about, like there was a development in Glenview that wanted to put expand a golf course parking lot on a biodiversity corridor, so we gave them that report to, to some of the residents in Glenview so they could use it at a meeting. So, all right, so then you'll download the file. And then this is what you'll get. You'll get a PDF report. So you'll get the name of the tool at the top and then you'll get this map right here, which will be the satellite imagery. And then again, it's the same data that you were seeing before, but now in this nice layout. So you could have this exported. Okay, I'll talk about these a little bit. So after you look at the green infrastructure considerations, so that's, you know, land use type, is it, you know, what zoning is it, soil hydro group, that is also in the data description because I don't know that by heart. Um, but as you scroll down, you start to see the different modeling objective priorities. So it'll say presence, no or yes, if that overlaps with the parcel. So for this one, there's not biodiversity corridors on this parcel, probably because it's, you know, a lot of pavement right now. So as you scroll, you can start to see there's not a ton of equity here, but for those of us that know the area, um, that makes that kind of checks out. There is life expectancy presence though. But then you'll go to public health again. We have a couple here. So there's daytime heat island. A lot of it is that pavement. Um, there is a need for tree canopy expansion. And then there is a presence of 2.5 concentrations. And then this one I'll highlight, so there's a ton of protected priorities, and that's why, of course, us at Friends are doing a lot of advocacy around this site because it is right along the river system, so there is a flood zone, there is impervious surface, and there's that wetlands and riparian buffers and shoreline presence as well. So that's what the PDF report looks like. All right, and then I'll have one other tool, to, one other feature to show. All right, so this is the 10-minute walk impact report that I will show. So you can either type in an address or you know just zoom to an area that you're interested in. So I'll zoom into this area. And again, I like to switch on my imagery base map so I can see what I'm looking at. All right, so the 10 minute walk impact report functionality is super neat. You draw a project area that you're interested in. It could be, you can draw any shape you want. We drew the river system to try and see who was within a 10 minute walk of the river. Um, so you can be very creative with this tool. It's really great. So what you do is you click on this little polygon button right here and then you will start to click and you can kind of see a little shape forming. I'm gonna try and draw this parcel right here. Okay, so then you'll double click it and then you can name it whatever you want. Does anybody know it? Yeah, hopefully, yeah, maybe some of you know about this local example. So this is the Tame and Silas parcel along the south branch of the Chicago River. So I drew that shape and what I'm gonna do now is tap to run the analysis. You'll get a pop-up that's saying, this analysis is based upon a park service area that is a 10 minute walk. And it's using park language. It's assuming that you're gonna make a new park because that's TPL's mission statement. So they included this, but it doesn't have to be a park. It could be anything you want, um, but it is just doing that 10 minute, 10 minute walk buffer. Okay, 
So this might take a second. Um, I pulled this up ahead, so hopefully this will finish in a second here. But what it's doing is it's going to gather demographics of the population that is within a 10-minute walk to this site. And the cool thing is, for those of us in GIS, it's intersected with the transportation network. So it's not doing that buffer, you know, where they're like, you're going to jump over a building to get to the part, you know, because so, sometimes that happens. It's not an accessible walk. So no one's jumping over the river system here. Um, and you'll see it, um, hopefully I'll do it quickly, but this one takes like a minute longer than the parcel report, um, but it's really fascinating. It'll start to show, you know, some of those demographics that are within a 10 minute walk. Um, but while it's loading, I'll just say we at Friends, again, interested, interested in this site because it's along the river system, but a lot of you might know about the Damon Siles advocacy going on, um, and we really want to, you know, keep this site on our radar because it's a really important site, a big site along the river system. So um, in terms of advocacy, um, it's cool to show this report to see who would be impacted by whatever development goes here. You can kind of see, is it low income? You know, what's the demographics here to really make that case? Just uh, mm -hmm. say you picked a tough, tough area to oh. answer that question for. So. Yeah. Oh, for, you mean like the the walk, the walk report? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean we know um, there's a lot of uh, accessibility, like especially by Bubbly Creek, that's hard to um, get to the different sites. Okay. I'm glad it reloaded. Sweet. Okay. So this yellow um, boundary that you're seeing there, the polygon, so that is where we're grabbing the demographics from. So, let's see. So you get these different, I'll just flip through them. So there's different charts that you can see, but then again, it has a PDF report, so I'll do that. Um, so again, you could share this with advocacy purposes or grant purposes, things like that. Um, so that will load in a second here. So uh, just, can you sort of create your own area and just Okay. Yeah, so you can do any shape you want. Um, that's why I was saying it was funny. I was going through the other day just to do the river system and see the different stretches of like who's within a 10 minute walk. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So this is the walk report that you're going to get. And as you, the first thing, again, I look at is kind of look at the map right away, seeing where we're grabbing, grabbing that 10 minute walk demographics. And you notice the shape is really wonky. That's because it's thinking about the transportation network, right? So that's where you can kind of see that. And then you go to the second page, and then this is where you start to see the second page has all the demographic info. Hopefully, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that. But you can see there's 254 people, not too many in this area compared to others. Um, but then you can see 82 households, 26% children, 62.99% adults, 52% low income, 25% middle income. 64.17% Hispanic. So again, and it'll say on the bottom where this data is coming from, or it also, yeah, census block data. Um, so this is just a really powerful resource for thinking about, are you doing a project? Do you want to see who's going to be impacted by that project? You know, if you're thinking about outreach and a large percent is Hispanic, maybe you want to have translation materials. Like there's so many different ways you could use this. Um, so I encourage you all to be creative with it. All right, the last thing that I'll show um, and there's a couple other functionalities that I encourage everyone to take a peek at. Um, but this last one I'll show is called the Create Custom Scenario Tool. So this is really great. I was showing you all the prioritization layers that we created as part of the tool. But let's say you're only interested in two of them weighed against each other. You're able to move these scale bars and look at your own analysis. So like, let's say you're doing a project and public health is really important to you. We're gonna put out an eight, and let's say equity is also super important. We'll put it at an eight too. And you'll start to see the map shift. I know those are similar, so let's turn on protect. Maybe we also really care about waterway protection. You can do absorb as well. So then you can start to see the map shift, and then you're interested at like, hmm, what are these areas that are you know darker than others for these different priorities? So I just wanted to highlight that's another way. Um, you could, if you're not interested in biodiversity or some of the other ones, you could just look at a couple weighed against each other. But I will end there because I know that's a lot and I'm probably over time. So, all right. Thanks. <laughs> okay. okay. So I'm just curious about, um, because I've seen what I perceive as gentrification going on. Mm -hmm. uh, 
how often do developers pay attention to this? Like, mm. uh, what's your feedback? Been? Are you talking about, sorry, what was the, you said gentrification? So, yeah, and like developers and how are they utilizing this tool? Yeah, so we are trying to get it into the hands of developers. We're still doing a lot of the outreach with the tool. But yeah, in terms of gentrification, it is interesting because I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with like green gentrification. And I think a lot of that does regard policy, you know, change. So I think that's really getting the right groups involved. You know, IEC we did a training with as well. So I think that's a large scale issue. But I think it's important to have a tool like this because then you can look at the demographics, you know, the equity considerations. So, but we are, again, a lot of my job is spreading the word of the tool. So we definitely have been using it to show developers and things like that. Um, but yeah, I think that's definitely, that's a policy level thing. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if that answers your question, but. <laughs> um, hi, I'd love to hear about um, just like the reception that you've seen once you've launched the tool and like, you know, who you see using it right now. Uh, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, so I guess a lot, we're not done with the outreach yet. So I think our initial outreach is we did a lot of agency training. So one of our first ones was MWRD. We did one with um, Chicago Public Health Department. Um, so it was cool. I think within like a lot of my job about doing these trainings and outreach, we've made a lot of new connections. So I think that's the cool thing is like really thinking about the multi-benefit approach and like everyone has a play in this kind of, you know, movement we want to make towards nature-based solutions. But in terms of receptiveness, I think, so one thing I didn't mention is we're updating the tool right now, actually. So we have funding. TPL um, is going to be committed to updating the tool every year, which is really exciting. So that's why I'm also curious from you all if you want to connect with me after, if there's layers that you think would be great you know, adjustments, um, we would love to do that. But yeah, in terms of feedback, we've had a couple, you know, recommendations like, can you include school district boundaries? So I think this was the first iteration of the tool. So there is a lot like more we could do with it. Um, another thing is, um, I don't think there's, yeah, there's not labels right now on the, the natural area. So someone was like, can you add those, right? So that's things we're thinking about for the update. Um, but yeah, in terms of recept receptiveness, like, positive mainly, but I think like definitely some like adjustments that people are like, you should have this. Um, and we're taking notes of that too. So um, I'm curious if you could talk a little bit more on the nature based solutions part of the, what this tool is supposed to facilitate and like, mm. what would be an example of uh, like a development where this tool would help uh, create a more nature based solution versus a, I guess a non-nature-based solution, I'm not sure. What <laughs> Pavement, the parking is. lot, yeah. yeah. Um, no, yeah, good question. So I think when I first saw the tool, one of the components that I thought, like, so in, in planning, we work a lot with private developers on our planning team at Friends, and one of the first things I thought about when looking at the tool was under the green infrastructure considerations, I thought that was a really specific component that private developers could look at because they could look at their parcel and they could say, oh, wow, like this is how much impervious cover, you know, I have on my parcel. Um, and it's really cool. So some of you might be familiar. There's a group at the city called the River Ecology Governance Task Force. Um, and that's something that Friends helps run um, with DPD and Metropolitan Planning Council. And we've been using this tool as we review developments with the city that are along the river of saying like, hey, there's a lot of impervious cover here, you know? So I think it's like having the developer, you can actually go to their parcel. And that, again, is something I like to highlight with this tool. It's like, it's kind of cool. I was excited that it was the parcel level analysis because that's a lot of like PDs, you know, and development focused stuff. So, yeah. Hi, um, this is really cool. It's just like so much data. I'm kind of <laughs> curious um, on the on the, along those lines. Um, have you done like usability testing of it? It's like there's just mm -hmm. like I'm. I know a lot about data, but I felt like kind of overwhelmed seeing yeah. all those menus. And, mm -hmm. and I'm also just as a second question, curious about the decision to add this password prompt in yeah. the front, like the account thing, like the mm -hmm. trade-offs. Obviously, you're going to turn some people away. Yeah. I'm curious what the trade-offs were that you were considered there. Yeah, so for accessibility, yeah, it's interesting because we actually had more data. So that's the thing with updating it, too, is we're being kind of cognizant of, like, what is this adding to the tool? Because we already have so many layers that we don't want to confuse people or have too much because there is a limit, you know, to too much data, um, surprisingly, right? But, um, yeah, in terms of usability, 
I mean, like, this is the first group I feel like that I've been having technical experts, which is why I was excited to come here. A lot of it has been, I did one with Chicago teachers, a training with them, and that was the group where they were kind of like, this is a lot, you know? And that's why I think I'm learning from these trainings, but it is a lot to do, and a lot of the trainings are 25 minutes. So sometimes to get around that, I did like an hour workshop with teachers where people brought their laptops and they could, so sometimes I think those are more accessible because then you could go to people's computers and walk them through a problem. Um, but yeah, I think it's really, and that user guide I do point people towards, but I know that's another barrier of like, will you actually look at it, you know, but we're still testing out the user friendliness of it. Um, and in terms of the password, I know that was something that, so TPL, the Trust for Public Land, they have 14 other of these tools in other U.S. cities. So that's why they came to us at the Great Chicago Watershed Alliance to have one in Chicago. Um, but that's just a requirement they have because we like to have, also we do like to have the email trackage because what we do is every year for the update, we send out an email to people who are using the tool because that's just a great way to be like, hey, you're using the tool, any data feedback that you have for us. So that's part of it too. Is there an API and... Um, mm. That's the first, uh, is there an API? Oh yeah, and then uh, is this an ArcGIS? Is is this an ArcGIS uh, backend? Yeah, so it's an ArcGIS platform, and the, you said API interface. Yeah, so that's something that we've been hearing. It's funny. I feel like I've been hearing this for a couple different feedback partners that I've been showing the tool to. So that's something that people want to see in an update is having that interface. So something that a lot of people have been emphasizing. So if you're interested in that, yeah, we can definitely take note. I'm interested in maybe uh, there's already kind of a lot of data, but it's funny enough that um, the cities and the maps are also very complicated and you can actually extract lots and lots of data. I'm wondering like uh, uh, what kind of data you can add up, like uh, how we can expand it to maybe other areas, um, maybe density, maybe something related to to maybe also how the the city itself uh, works and how it's planned because it's also a thing that affects like equity and stuff like this um, and transportation is also very important. It's a bit more complicated topic in terms of that, but um, I, I'm I'm interested. Like, are you interested like in implementing it and maybe if you do like how you would do that? So yeah. Mm. Sorry, just to reiterate, kind of like an implementation question, or there was a couple, sorry, points in that. Uh, basically, uh, first question is like, do you plan to implement it? Mm -hmm. Like, it would, be, would it be useful at least? And the second, if you will, like how you will do it, yeah. Yeah, so, well, as you, as I said a little bit earlier, so there were, we were trying to get that city agency training kind of right away because of course a goal of this would be, it would be great to have MWD look at this when they have to think about, you know, their land and who they lease that out to. So I think that is a big goal, which is why we're trying to connect with different agencies to kind of have them use this, especially because of the equity component with nature-based solutions and things like that. Um, so that's definitely a goal. So I think our, our outreach is just trying to train them on the tool and show them the capabilities, but. Okay, uh, then let's give our presenter another round of applause. And, uh...